exactly what you want to see. Let's run this puppy in. Score a touchdown and tie this game. Life, run for your life, touchdown on one play. Worked on this in practice. Touchdown. It's up to Kelvin Benjamin. This is all you, buddy. Kelvin Benjamin for a touchdown. Oh, he toasted his man. Holmes toasted his man. Spin move. Oh! Oh! What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Notre Dame All-American Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14 College Football Revamped. That is right, we are here in the offseason coming off of our second national championship appearance and victory of the series. Year number two has come to an end, and we are finally in the offseason. It's been a long road. Year number two has felt like it's gone on for uh, probably two years, because that's about how long it had has gone on for, if you guys are, are uh, following with the series. But hopefully season number three will not take as long to get through. With all that being said, I hope you guys do go on and enjoy the offseason episode. These are the most fun part, and uh, if you do, Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, join the Juice Club. Let's get into the video. We've got coaching carousel to take care of. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be staying at Notre Dame. But we can see if there's any interesting jobs. Auburn and Oklahoma State are both up for grabs. Gus Malzahn was fired and so was Mike Gundy. Okay, so it looks like our offensive coordinator Mark Helfrich is uh, as a candidate for the Oklahoma State job. Hopefully he doesn't leave. We are signed through 2019, our contract, so we are uh, pretty good. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be we're going anywhere soon. So we will advance to the next stage, which is players leaving. Maybe the most crucial part other than seeing who we got in actual recruiting. This is probably the most crucial part of the offseason because we get to find out if we are starting with Marcus Mariota next season or if we are sticking with Johnny Manziel for a third season. Maybe, maybe losing both of them because they're both junior red shirts, so they both could leave. Who knows? We are get an upgrade here for us. And now it is time to find out what is the next step Ste stepped what is the next step for our team and it looks like we lost both mark helfrich and uh whoever our defense coordinator was we signed kyle whittingham and sean watson as our two new coordinators that is very very interesting we do not have enough upgrades to upgrade uh every single thing here but we can try and get as close as possible. We can at least get everything once, I think. Here we go. We'll get tackling up. We have three upgrades left. So if we do just the bottom three, I guess, then we'll have not too many upgrades left on Kyle Winningham. And then on offense, Sean Watson is our new our new offensive coordinator and he is going to hopefully uh, hopefully help us keep this offense as good as it has been for the past two seasons obviously Mark Helfrich former Oregon coach in real life was our offense coordinator for I think both of the seasons I don't think he was here for maybe he was here for one year I don't know I guess we can check and see where he got hired to but here we go Players leaving. Let's get jump right to it. Let's jump right into it. Who's gone? Who's going where? That's a lot of draft picks. Okay, so quarterback, no quarterbacks are gone. Johnny Manziel and Marcus Mariota both decide to stay. Melvin Gordon has decided to go to the NFL draft as a junior redshirt. Let's just do it this way. This way is easier. Melvin Gordon is going to the draft as a third round pick. Leonard Williams projected to be a fourth round pick. He's a sophomore redshirt. I don't like that. I think we should be able to persuade him. Guarantee him a national title. I think we can guarantee him a conference title. 
Our persuasion chance is high, so it's not going to be super hard to get him back. Let's guarantee him a conference championship. I want to take some time to think it through. Uh, okay, let's guarantee him that he will win or that he will not regret. Okay, there we go. He's staying. Yes, we got him. The the we got him his uh, degree. That's what he cares about. Kavari Russell decides to go as a as a flat junior. We could persuade him to stay. I think we should try and persuade him to stay. His chance is high, but he still hasn't made up his mind yet. What about if we guarantee him a national title? Yes. Kavari Russell is coming back. Taylor Decker, let's persuade him to get back. He's coming back. Okay, if we just if we get these guys to uh, say that they're they want to finish their degrees, then they're gonna come back. Jamal Adams is transferring to West Virginia, and it's a very low chance. Uh, we'll play in more than nine games. If I stay, can I get another car? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can get another car. Uh, you'll have more than five interceptions. It's a toss up right now. I'll let you know soon. Uh, have more than 80 tackles. Yes! We got Jamal Adams. That's going to be a hard thing to do. So we have to get him five interceptions, 80 tackles. Oh, Jamal Adams is going to have to be... That's a hard one to get <laughs> to do, but he's coming back. So, okay. That's interesting. We got him to stay. Trey Waynes... Promise him that he'll stay and get his thing. So Trey Wayne's is coming back. Sheldon Day, we would like him to come back. He's coming back. Okay. Marcus Peters, Derek Watt. I want Derek Watt to come back because I need a fullback. He's coming back. Uh, Ju Joshua Perry, we want to come back. He's coming back. Mar Marcus Peters, we want Marcus Peters back. I think we want Marcus Peters back. Let's just get everybody back. Okay. So everybody that was that was talking about going early is coming back. That's awesome. And we got Jamal Adams, so he's not transferring. But the guys that are leaving, that have to leave, that are seniors, Sammy Watkins, projected first-round pick. Jarvis Landry, projected first-round pick. Louis, uh, Louis Nix is a projected first-round pick. Danny Shelton, first-round. Haha ha Clinton Dix is first-round. Stephon Tuitt is first-round. Ryan Shazier is first-round. We're going to have a first-round loaded with Notre Dame players. Ibrahim Campbell is first-round. Ishaq Williams is a second-rounder. Odell Beckham is a second-rounder. Troy Nicholas, a third rounder. Eric Ebron is a fifth rounder. And then David Andrews, Demarcus Lawrence, Shaq Mason, and Jude Rhodes are all graduation players. So we've got a lot of draft picks potentially on this team. I'm happy that we got these guys to stay. I am happy, especially this Jamal Adams. I rarely, rarely ever get players that are transferring, that want to transfer. I rarely ever get them to come back. But that was like one of the first times I've ever done that. So... We're getting them to come back, but the biggest news of this offseason is that Johnny Manziel's coming back for his senior season. He's going to be a senior redshirt coming back to play. So we get a third year of Johnny Manziel, which means do we keep Johnny Manziel as a starter? Or do we have Marcus Mariota as a starter? I don't know. There's a lot of big questions to be answered in the offseason. So let's go to head coach. Big Ten head coaches that are new. Um, Illinois got a new coach. Oh, we took uh, Watson. We took Sam Watson for or, uh, Sean Watson, excuse me, from head head coach of Illinois. He he's now our offense coordinator. Urban Meyer still at Ohio State. Remember this? These coaches were all head coaches when I started the series originally. So that's why uh, Ryan Day is not the coach and Urban Meyer is. Big Ten head coaches are uh, pretty much the same. Offensive coordinators, oh, some some new ones here. We got Curtis Johnson, the new offensive coordinator at Purdue. Buster Faulkner, what a name. Buster Faulkner, hardly know her. Is that Joe Burrow? Oh, it's Jimmy Burrow. <laughs> Luke Fickle, still the defense coordinator at Ohio State. That's how old this is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Luke Fickle, still the defense coordinator at Ohio State, not the head coach of Cincinnati. Let's go around and see where our guys went. Debo or Debo Dabo is still the head coach at Clemson. If we go to the Big 12, Art Bryles. Oh God, he's still the head coach at Baylor. Bronco Mendenhall's the new head coach of what was that? Oklahoma State. He takes over for Mike Gundy. Good for Bronco Mendenhall. 
Tommy Tuberville is still the head coach at Cincinnati. I forgot he was even he was even the head coach at Cincinnati. Willie Taggart still at uh, UC USF. We've got not really anybody. Skip Holtz, I guess, at Louisiana Tech. Nobody in, in the Conference USA. No here. Uh, nobody really knew. Oh, Matt Rule? Not on the Panthers. He is at Northern Illinois. He left. Uh, he didn't leave for a new job. He got the new job. Then we go to the the Midwest. We are not the Midwest. Is this the Midwest? I don't even know. Anybody new here? Nobody cares. Pac-12. Rich Rod still at Arizona. Uh, Jim Mora still at UCLA, and Mark Helfrich is now the head coach at Utah. So maybe we put Utah on the list of of teams that we play non-conference, so that we can get a little taste of our former offensive coordinator there. Then we got SEC. Rod Carey, former Arizona head coach, is now at uh, at Gus Malzahn's old spot at Auburn, and it looks like Bud Foster takes over for Franklin at Vanderbilt. The Sun Belt, nothing really crazy. Oh, Major Alpha White's at Troy now. So where did uh, where did who was it? Who was I looking for? Where'd Gus Malzahn go? I didn't see his name anywhere. Is he a defense coordinator now? We got to go to defense coordinators and find Gus. Where is Gus Malzahn? Where did he get a job at? Ooh, is that Jim Knowles? Jim Knowles, current Ohio State defense coordinator, is now at uh, Mid Middle Tennessee State. Gus, where are you? Gus Malzahn, where are you? Is he not a defensive guy? I'm pretty sure he's a defensive coach. Maybe he just doesn't have a job? I don't know. Let's try offense coordinator. Maybe he's an offense coordinator. Mike Gundy's now the offensive coordinator at Clemson. Look at that. And Gus Malzahn is the offensive coordinator at Pittsburgh. P? That's crazy. I can't believe Mike Gundy is the offensive co coordinator at Clemson and Gus Malzahn is the offensive coordinator at Pittsburgh. That's so weird. They're both not offensive coaches. They're both defensive coaches, but whatever. So that's coaches leave, that's coach changes and players leaving. Let's go to transfer request. See if anybody wants to come to Notre Dame. We're not gonna import our 20, Madden 25 draft class. That's uh, not a thing. I guess I could play Madden 25 if you really want me to. <laughs> Does anybody want to come to Notre Dame as a freshie? Transfer requests. Ooh, okay. We got a freshman fullback, Rodney Garcia. 59 overall. We can turn him into somebody. I'll look up fullbacks, and uh, we'll turn him into somebody. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, no, we will admit him. I'll, I'll take him on. That's cool. I don't usually get transfers. So he can come in and sit for a year because he has to. All right, this is the results of the draft. So we had a lot of first-round picks. Ryan Shazier is the first Notre Dame player taken off the board. Then Sammy Watkins, Lewis Nix, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Jarvis Landry, Ibrahim Campbell, Stefan Tuitt, and Danny Shelton were all first round picks. And these two guys are going to be electric at the next level. Odell Beckham Jr. ends up being a second rounder. So does Ishaq Williams. Melvin Gordon ends up being a third rounder. So he decided to not stay and uh, he, went to the, he went to the draft and he ends up being a third round pick. Okay. We tried with Melvin, but he didn't come back. Troy Nicholas is a third round pick. Eric Ebron is our last draft pick with a fifth. Some big name players headed to the league, ladies and gentlemen. We can take a look around the uh, NCAA and see some other big name guys. Anyone from Alabama? No one of huge note. Kadeem Carey from Arizona goes to the league. Auburn had no players drafted. It's a little weird. Willie Sneed. I, that's weird. I didn't even realize Ball State had Willie Sneed. And he goes to the league. There you go. Baylor. Latch C. Strunk. What a great college name. Jay Ajaye head into the league. He got drafted in the fourth round. I think that's close to where he got drafted in real life. He was third or fourth round, I think. Clemson. Sharon Peak. Uh, Grady Jarrett, presumably to the Falcons. <laughs> Who else is here? Any, any other big name teams? Florida. Florida had a lot of guys. They had one first round pick. Anybody else? Trey Burton. Trey Burton, who's now a tight end, I guess. Jeff Driscoll. There's Jeff Driscoll. Uh, nobody else really that's mattered, that matters. Nobody from Georgia that matters. What about if we get down to LSU? Ja 
Lyle Collins gets drafted. Jalen Mills. Jalen Collins. Okay, some big name guys there. Louisville. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy Two Gloves headed to the Vikings, ladies and gentlemen. And Devontae Parker to the Dolphins. Is that Calvin Pryor, too? Calvin Pryor. Eli Rogers. Okay, there's some good names there at, my, at, uh, at Louisville. Michigan has Jake Ryan. James Ross. Don't know who that is. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Devin Funches. And Devin Gardner got drafted, too. Good for Devin. He's always a good guy. Uh, Miami had Anthony Ciccolo. Nobody really that great. Uh, if we go to Michigan State, nobody. What about good old Ohio State University? Braxton Miller, first round pick. Bradley Roby, first round pick. Devin Smith, first round pick. Michael Bennett, fourth. And Evan Spencer, fifth. Good for the Bucks. Good for the Bucks. Oklahoma had Blake Bell, Daryl Williams, Tyrus Thompson. Okay, okay. What about Oregon? Uh, ooh, Terrence Mitchell. Okay, nobody really crazy, but still. Adrian Amos from Pitt, uh, from Penn. Let's get to, what about Stanford? Anybody from Stanford? A lot of guys from Stanford. A couple first-round picks as well. Okay, Stanford had a good year in the draft. Tennessee. Big Texas, hook em horns. No first-round picks, but... A lot of people got drafted. A lot of people getting jobs in the NFL. Well, who knows if they'll actually have jobs in the, in the NFL. USC. Ooh, USC had a lot of guys. First round pick Marquise Lee. Randall Telfer. Xavier Grimble. Okay, okay. The NFL is getting a lot of talent. I will say that. Okay, that's, uh, that's all for that. Then we've got transfer requests that we already looked at because we got that fullback. And we move on to good old recruiting. Gotta get them recruits. So we officially had eight first round picks, two second rounders, and two third rounders with a fifth. And we convinced to st uh, eight players to stay and we convinced Jamal Adams to stay from transferring. So all in all, good offseason. Able to get keep all the guys that we wanted to keep. For another season a lot of those guys promises would just to get make sure that they'd get their their uh the, what am i trying to think of their degrees the only one i'm worried about is jamal adams <laughs> that's the only one i'm worried about i don't know if we're going to be able to get him all the stuff we promised him he's going to be very very upset next off season all right we've got thirteen thousand points to spread out through this recruiting board and i don't know really if we need any i mean obviously we're gonna get some more people but we've got a big big recruiting class we've got a quarterback that we're gonna have to redshirt because we've got a ton of quarterbacks on the roster already <laughs> but we've got some good athletes we've got some wide receivers some linebackers some defensive ends some safeties some corners some middle linebackers we've got a good class what we're missing is like special not special teams uh what am i trying to think of like skill position that's what i'm trying to think of skill position i don't know why i couldn't think of it okay so the best guys on our board are jj hughes ryan weaver and marvin Britton. we don't necessarily need these guys because we are we already are bringing in a lot of receivers and who knows that these athletes could be receivers as well like peter wright if we go to his uh his stats and stuff 90 speed 92 excel he could be a running back uh what's his catching his catching is 76 his route running is 87 this guy is a wide receiver slash running back his agility 79 strength is 70 spec catch is 70 release 75 he's probably how tall is he how tall is he? 6'4", 221, so he's a receiver. But he can also play a little bit of running back, too. Okay, so that's interesting. What about this athlete, Terrence Hall? He's got... Oh, we didn't even scout him fully. There's 50 of my points. I didn't realize we didn't scout him. He's a gem. 89 speed, 84 excel. He's got decent zone coverage. Decent release. Uh, his carrying's 91. His route running's 82. This guy could be corner. His his uh pursuit isn't very good. His press isn't good either. 
but his play rec is really good. He could be a safety, I guess. A safety or a receiver. Maybe, how tall is he? He is 5'10". Oh, he could be a running back, too. Because he's got decent, uh, okay break tackle. He's got good ball carrying vision. Uh, his carrying's really good. So he could be a running back, maybe a corner, too. We'll have to wait and see on him. What Do we have any other athletes that we have to decide on? I think those are the only two athletes we have. Yeah, it is. Okay. So maybe it is good to get those wide receivers because it looks like we're going to need them. So I'll put about... Oops, I didn't mean to go down to you. I'll put a... I don't know how many points we'll put on them. We got a ton of points. But we have 12,050 because I... Uh, I spent 50 points because I never scouted that first guy, that that uh, athlete. I'll start by putting 1,000 points on each of these guys. And I'll put 1,000 points on J.J. Hughes. That's not what I'm going to finish with. Michigan's really hot and heavy for this this defense end so we're gonna have to worry about him we're getting pretty decent bonuses for all these guys but it's gonna be pretty tough to land them this free safety is gonna be pretty tough we are in the lead for this outside linebacker but we've already got a pretty good amount of outside linebackers this corner i'll put some points on just because we're, we have a pretty good lead on him he's nothing special but if we could bring him in that'd be cool this tight end i'll put some points in on and I'll go and I'll, I'll adjust all these after I figure out who I want to bring in. This corner would be a fight. That D-tackle would be a fight. That guard would be pretty much a fight. Actually, this free safety wouldn't be too bad. I'll offer him a scholarship just to get us back even. Although he's a Juco. I don't really mess with Juco's. We're 3,000 points behind this defensive tackle. It's I don't think it's worth it to get him in the, the thing. So I'll remove this guard. I'll remove this free safety, even though I just offered him a scholarship. It's okay. I'll remove this D-tackle. I will remove, not this corner, not yet. Not this outside linebacker. I'll remove the, hmm, who else do I want to remove? I'll remove this outside linebacker, Donald Bell, just because we don't need any more outside linebackers. I think we're good on that. We have like two, right? Uh, Kenny Eaton, the number three outside linebacker, and then Patrick Singleton. So, yeah, we're bringing in two already, so we don't really need an outside linebacker. So I'll remove him. Uh, this D-tackle will keep. We'll keep you. Keep you. Keep you. Okay, so I'll put some points on David Levine. Maybe like 500 points for now. Charles Dickerson will put some points in on. Oregon State's pretty hot and heavy for him. We'll go 600 points for him, and Danny Fontaine will put a point, a couple points in on. I'll put a thousand points on Danny. I'll put, I'll go back and put a thousand points on those other guys too, and then we'll go and adjust them after we figure out what we want to do officially. Put a thousand points on you. All right. What about running backs? Are we good on running backs, or do I need to recruit this guy? I don't have a running back currently, so. It looks like we should probably go for him. And it looks like we're pretty solid on him already. We're 3,000 above the Buckeyes. I haven't even offered him a scholarship yet. Do I need to offer anybody else? Doesn't look like it. Uh, okay, this free safety. I don't think we need a free safety. We're bringing one in, aren't we? I don't know if we are or not. This guy, Brad Kinnery. I mean, he'd be cool to, to have. I don't I don't know if we if it's theoretically possible to get him with the points that we have. Maurice Jones, we can just let you go. I don't I don't want you anymore. And then Robbie Robinson, uh, we can let you go too. Sorry, Robbie. Uh, outside linebacker Sam Nash, you can get out of here. And then Aaron Holland. Uh, yeah, you you can actually. Uh, this guy's. Nah, you can you can go. You can go. <laughs> you can go. Goodbye, Aaron Holland. All right. So these are the guys that we currently have. I'll offer you a scholarship just because I haven't yet. And we have a little bit of points. I'm gonna have to figure out. Not all these guys are gonna have a thousand points. I'm just trying to figure out who I want to give the thousand points to. 
I feel like I should give more points to this guy. So I'll give this guy the max amount of points that we have left, and then we'll take away points from other people. So we'll give you the max amount of points that I can offer you that we have left. There we go, 3,800 points. Okay, that's not all we're gonna give him, but we need to decide who I wanna take points away from. I think I'm gonna take points away from Lionel Parker. We have a big, big lead, and I don't think Ohio State's gonna go too heavy on him, so we'll off, we'll keep him at 600 points. Um, we have a pretty big lead on David Levine, so I'll drop him down to about 600 points. Charles Dickerson. Uh, if we're gonna go for Brad Kennery, we probably don't need Charles Dickerson, so I'll drop you down to about 500 points. Then we'll put some more points on you since it's going to be a battle with us and uh, Louisiana Tech it's going to be a tough battle to win I'll drop about a 5,000 points on you if we don't get him we don't get him we don't necessarily need to put a ton of points into you because you're not really that great and we have a pretty decent lead on you so we'll drop you down to 500 we'll drop you actually we probably should keep a lot of points on you maybe 1500 on this tight end I'll drop you down to 500. I'll drop these other guys down to 500 just to make it even for me. All right. Now, these guys up here are going to need some points. So, this guy is going to need a lot of points. This JJ Hughes guy is going to need a lot of points. So, we're going to have to drop down these, these points. I mean, I'm going to even have to drop down Brad's points because he's not even the better D end. I forgot about that. So, we're going to have to drop you down to about 3,500. Even more than that, probably. If we're going to want to bring in JJ Hughes. All right, let's go. Because Michigan, knowing Michigan, they're probably going to go all in on this on JJ. So we are definitely going to want to offer him a lot of points. I'm probably going to lower the offer on Marvin Britton to bring in more points for JJ. There we go, thirty-three thousand. I don't or thirty-three hundred. I don't know if that's enough to get him. Hmm. Danny Fontaine probably doesn't need a thousand points either. Some of these guys we're just not going to get. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not getting all these guys. I think I'm going to drop Lionel Parker down a lot, even down to probably 200 points. Same with uh, David Levine. And we will drop easily down to 200 points too. I haven't even offered him a contract, or a, not a contract, a scholarship. We'll put more points in JJ. Okay, 12-3. I'll put a couple more points in Ryan Weaver. I don't know if it's worth it, though. Hmm. JJ's the guy that we want to go after the most, I think. Right? Right? Yeah, I think so. Brad. I'll have to take Brad's points down. I mean, Brad would be cool to have. It's just I don't know if we'd be able to get him. We have a better shot at getting JJ than we do at getting Brad. So if we drop, if we move uh, JJ up to 47... 100 points. Is that good enough to keep away from Michigan? Is that good enough to keep them away from Michigan? They're losing points and they're 645 behind. They have a plus 295. We have a plus 330. I think that these are enough points to keep ahead of them unless they just put all of their points into them. That's a very high possibility. I think we're fine with this. I think we're fine with this. Maybe I should go a little bit hide, harder on this tight end, Maurice Sharp. But other than that, I think we're good. I'm going to back out. I'm going to confirm these points, and we are going to... Maybe we don't get any of them. That's a very high possibility. <laughs> that is a very high possibility. But we've had a pretty good draft class otherwise. So a lot of our guys signed during the season. So let's go to signing day. It's a big day for us. Let's get to it. So 
we sign a top 10 class in the country, a four star prospect we got, we got four three stars, sign a top 10 prospect, sign a prospect and find a gem. So we are ready to go find out who is officially going to be a Notre Dame fighting Irish player for hopefully the next three to four seasons. Let's go to signing day. Remember, these guys aren't going to be the names next time you see them. So JJ Hughes, whoever that was, whatever we just spent all those points on, they aren't going to be there. So Dominique Lewis, who we took off the board, he didn't commit anywhere. Tyler Thomas, who we also took off the board, didn't commit anywhere. Marvin Britton ends up going to North Kakalaki. David Levine goes to Oregon. Oregon jumped up out of nowhere and got that guy. Charles Dickerson goes to Wake, oh, Wake Forest. I was about to say West Forest. Wake Forest. Thomas Nolan, he goes to Wyoming. Alan Lewis headed to Air Force, so he's going to go to the Army. Well, he's going to go to the Air Force. <laughs> he's going to go to the military, I should say. Robert Daniels is headed to Alabama. Brad Kinnery, we didn't get him, actually. Okay. He's going to Louisiana Tech, so have fun playing for Louisiana Tech. Travis Easley going to Navy. Sam Nash to Nevada. Matt Wilson to Florida State. Boston College gets Mike Hayes. Bryce Fernando headed to Hook'em Horns, Texas. And so is Ryan Weaver. He's going to go Hook'em Horns as well. Robbie Robinson, what a name. He's going to Northern Illinois. And this right here is our recruiting class. So, quarterbacks, Jonathan Branch. He will not be named Jonathan Branch the next time you see him. He will be whatever quarterback was in this recruiting class that I want to get, basically. So he's here. We got a quarterback. We got a running back, Lionel Parker. So he decided to come here. I guess Ohio State really didn't even push for him. <laughs> so we got a new running back. Wide receiver, we got two. We got Glenn Gallagher, the number three receiver in the country, and then Brandon Hale, the number 44 receiver in the country. Both those guys are headed to Notre Dame. We got the tight end, Maurice Sharp. So it worked out for us. We got him. He's coming here. We didn't get any offensive linemen, which is a little bit scary, but okay. J.J. Hughes, the number four defensive end in the country, signed last minute. But he chose Notre Dame along with Jim Johnson, number 15 defense end. We got some problems here with these two guys. That is for sure. Defensive tackle, we end up getting Danny Fontaine, number 95 D tackle. Three outside linebackers chose to come to Notre Dame. Donald Bell, who I think we... I, I'm pretty sure I got rid of him off the board, but he still decided to come. Who knows if he'll stay or not. Kenny Eaton is the number three outside linebacker. He's been here for a while. He's officially here now. Patrick Singleton, also been here for a while. He's number 12 outside linebacker in the country. Kenner Eaton's number three. Middle linebacker, we got two of them. Ryan Austin, number 18 middle linebacker. And Greg Hines, number 31. Maybe he's uh, related to the Hines ketchup family. Corner, we got one. That's Matt Cooper, number 34 in the country. Free safeties, we didn't get any. Strong safeties, we got Tannard Mooney. What a name. <laughs> number three strong safety in the country we got one punter Sergio Tidwell who uh you guys know that Jude Rhodes was uh was gone for after this season so he's here now Sergio and we got two athletes Peter Wright and Terrence Hall who knows where they're gonna play depends on who I choose them to be as their player <laughs> as their real life counterpart not scouted are all the guys that we got that I didn't scout I guess uh, no scholarship. Yeah, I don't know why Donald Bell chose to commit here. I didn't even offer him a scholarship. He might not make the team. But that is everybody that signed with Notre Dame this offseason. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. You, will, you won't You will know who I choose to be uh, the new players until season three, game number one. So leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. We also have a little bit of a upgrade for us. What should I upgrade? I probably should upgrade recruiting. Recruiting. So that is... Pipeline. You gain 3,000 extra recruiting points for the offseason. That's probably what we want to do. Let's do that. Letter of Intent is now upgraded fully. So we get the max amount of recruiting points. That probably hurt us a little bit this offseason. But now that we have it fully, it is good to go. We're level 22 and we're uh, over halfway to level 23. So that's pretty good. 
before you know it, we'll be level 50 or what. I don't even know. Advance to the next stage. I don't even know what the next stage is. Oh, it's position changes. Oh, so we get to change those athletes. I don't even know who they're going to be yet. So I don't know what position they're going to turn into. I have my ideas on who I want to bring in, who I want to quote unquote recruit, I guess. Position changes. Let's get those athletes figured out where they want to go. Mariota is a senior red shirt. Manziel is a senior red shirt. This is the first time we get to look at our roster. It's going to be interesting. They say that Mariota is better. He's jumped Manziel in the the roster. Does that mean he jumps him in the depth chart as well? I don't know. We've also got Jameis Winston and we got Deshaun Watson. So... It's going to get pretty crazy, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to get pretty crazy. Jameis will only be here for one more season, and that's if Deshaun Watson doesn't um, leave after this year, too. We got some big decisions to make next offseason. We got some big decisions to make this year, too. Mariota looks better, but Manziel has better stats, which is why I'm worried. I don't man, It felt like when, when you remember that episode when Manziel got hurt in the snow game, and Marcus Mariota came in. It just felt like our offense played better with Mariota out there than it did with with Manziel. So, I don't know. I don't really know what to do. Todd Gurley is our senior running back still. And now with Melvin Gordon going to the draft early, Derrick Henry steps up and he gets to be our running back, our backup running back. We also got Alvin Kamara and Christian McCaffrey plus this running back, Lionel Parker. That'll be redshirted. At fullback, we've got Derek Watt and Rodney Garcia, but he's a transfer, so he will be sitting out all year anyway. So that's good. At least I don't have to recruit a, a fullback anymore. <laughs> Wide receiver, we've got Amari Cooper. We've got Mike Evans, Michael Thomas, Will Fuller, and Juju as the the main wide receivers. And these guys will be the main wide receivers. We're going to redshirt the other two guys, Glenn Gallagher and Brandon Hale. But these are the boys. These are the boys for next season. I'm excited. Amari Cooper and Mike Evans, certainly very, very good. But we haven't really seen a whole lot of these, these other guys. Michael Thomas, Will Fuller, and Juju. So it'll, it'll be exciting to see how they play. Tight end, OJ Howard, Dalton Schultz, and uh, Mark Andrews. Hopefully Mark Andrews in training goes up in overall. You know what I might do? I might turn this guy, Maurice Sharp, into Mark Andrews. And then turn Mark Andrews into like an offense lineman because I think that's what he's supposed to be. I, what's he good at? What's his best position? What are you supposed to be, Mark? What are you supposed to be? You're supposed to be a quarterback? No, you're supposed to be a running back or a wide receiver. You'd be a lot better at wide receiver. Oh, Mark. Well, technically, Mark Andrews was a wide receiver at college, wasn't he? He was a Oklahoma wide receiver. You know what? I think that'd be pretty fun. Let's move Mark Andrews to wide receiver. I think that'd be pretty fun. Then we can definitely... Uh, having a 6'6 six, six wide receiver, plus going alongside Mike Evans, who's 6'5", that'd be pretty fun. I'm pretty sure he was a wide receiver at college. I don't know. Who knows? But he's a much higher overall than a 51, so that helps. And then tight end can be whoever I choose. Maybe we can make him Shannon Sharp. I don't know. <laughs> And then moving on to offensive line, I didn't recruit any offensive linemen because I didn't need to. We still got McGlinchey and Stanley. I think Stanley's going to start because he's a senior. But what do we do about Quentin Nelson? Do we move Quentin Nelson to guard? We might have to. We got Isaiah Wynn. Senior. Oh, we're going to have to get a center. We got both seniors at center. Austin Blythe is also a senior. Our offensive line is going to be uh, hurting next year. I, I seriously think we move Quentin Nelson to guard. Let's move him to left guard. He turns into a 77, which isn't horrible. But he will start over Isaiah Wynn, probably. And then we can figure out what next. Like, maybe we move Isaiah Wynn to right guard uh, next offseason when Austin Blythe leaves. Who knows? I don't know. But for right now, Quentin Nelson will be the starting left guard. Then we move to left end. We got Joey Bosa and then our new Jim Johnson guy. So Joey Bosa takes over at left end. Right end, Sheldon Day still holding down the fort with Robert Kendiche, DeForest Buckner, and Miles Garrett. And then the other new recruit, J.J. Hughes. At D-tackle, it's a little thin. 
Leonard Williams, Malik McDowell, and Danny Fontaine. Maybe I move JJ Hughes to D tackle. Are you a good D tackle? You're a 78 at D tackle. What about uh, the other guy? Jim Johnson, what are you at D tackle? You're an 80 at D tackle. What about moving you to left end? You're still a 79. Okay, so we move JJ Hughes to left end. He stays there. Maybe we move DeForest Buckner to D-Tackle, too. He's an 84 at D-Tackle. Hmm, I'm just trying to find these guys the most amount of playing time. Is really what I'm trying to do here. I like having a little bit more depth at left end, though. Even if we don't move JJ Hughes. What is he at D-Tackle? He's only an 80. He's 84. Let's move DeForest Buckner to D-Tackle. Then he can be behind Leonard Williams. Then we got left outside linebacker. Miles Jack will start at left outside linebacker, but Kenny Eaton and Patrick Singleton will be here as well. Then at middle linebacker, we've got Jalen Smith. We've got Reggie Raglan. We got Ben Bulware and Rashawn Evans, plus these two other middle linebackers who I don't know if will make the team, if we're being honest. Are they good at any other spot? We might need depth somewhere else. Oh, these these guys are good at at line or at uh, linemen, defensive linemen. What about you? You're not really good at anything, aren't you? <laughs> you're just kind of here, aren't you? Okay, so you're not really good at anything. I mean, you're better at defensive line, but not, not by much. This guy's actually like a seventy or something. Interesting. We could move you to D-Tackle. Oh, you're 6'2", 227. You're not really a D-Tackle. Right outside linebacker, Joshua Perry, Leonard Floyd, and then this Donald Bell guy, who actually might end up staying here. <laughs> he might stay, even though we didn't recruit him. And then corner. A lot of corners, a lot of good corners. A lot of old corners, veteran experience corners. Trey Waynes, Kavari Russell, Marcus Peters will all be gone guaranteed next year because they're all seniors. But then we got Jalen Ramsey, Eli Apple, Tredavious White, who are a little bit older. Adoree Jackson and Marcus or Marshawn Lattimore, who are freshmen. And then Matt Cooper, who will be redshirted. But who knows what he'll turn into. Free safety, we've just got Kevin Byard. And then uh, Lyle, or Lyle Collins, Landon Collins, Jamal Adams, Keanu Neal, and Tanner Mooney. Well, we've got to start Jamal Adams at some point. He's got to play this year. Maybe he'll be sub -line I don't think there is sub linebacker in this game. I was going to say maybe he'd be sub linebacker, but I don't think that's in this game. So who knows what's going to happen with Jamal Adams? That's going to be a rough one. <laughs> Let's move you. To Can we move you to free safety? I don't care if you're bad. Let's move you to free safety. We need some depth over there. So we'll move you to free safety. Kicker is still Will Lutz. We're going to have to recruit a kicker this offseason, or this season. And uh, Sergio Tidwell is our punter. Athletes, though. Terrence Hall and Peter Wright. What are you good at? So you are a running back, wide receiver, or possibly a free safety. I like the sound of that. Okay. Okay, so you got some decent positions. What about you, Mr. Peter Wright? Running back, wide receiver, tight end. Interesting. You're 6'4". You can't play corner, though. I wish you could play corner. So he's an offensive guy. He's tight end, wide receiver, or running back. And you, you are running back, wide receiver, maybe a line, or maybe a corner or safety. So he can play defensively and... So Terrence Hall is going to be on, def on defense. Peter Wright's going to be on offense. It's just a matter of where on offense they, in defense they go. So running back, we don't need. We're good. Wide receiver, we don't need. We're good. Tight end, we could use. Probably the best option for Peter Wright. Probably the best option. for He's 6'4". That's a good college tight end. Let's move him there. Now, on defense, it said he's a good corner and free safety. Free safety, obviously, would probably be better than corner. And we can always move him later on. So, let's move him to free safety. Let's move Terrence Hall to free safety. 72 there. So, that's that's good. So, we got Peter right now at tight end. He is better than uh, Marie Sharp. So, that's cool. 
And then if we go to free safety, he should be better than our second guy that we had there, Tanner, Tanner Mooney. So, all right. He's only 5'10", but he's got some decent stats. He's he got better speed than both these guys. Better agility. His awareness isn't there yet. But remember, these guys' stats and uh, their names aren't going to be what they are right now. So, I was just doing this for the positions. Filling out what positions we need. Because next time you see these guys... They will have real-life player names, and they will have the real-life player stats for what that player had in their freshman season. So, let's say I recruit, let's say that quarterback that I have is Lamar Jackson. So, I will go to the 2015 roster that I have, I will go to Louisville, I will find Lamar Jackson as a freshman, and I will, I will take down every single stat that he has, and I, I will write down what, everything about him, like his, what face he has, what... Uh, what stuff he wears like his his equipment and stuff and i'll take all that stuff down and then i will transfer it i will do it all on this and make that lamar jackson so it'll be like a carbon copy of that version of lamar jackson the freshman version of lamar jackson so that's what we're gonna do and i say lamar jackson because that's probably who we are gonna recruit that's probably who that guy's gonna end up being so how much more of the offseason do we have left now that we've done position change we can do training results we don't have that much left of the offseason so we're getting close to the end of the episode. Dun, dun, dun. End of the episode. End of the episode. Number one team in the country. Back-to-back -back natty champions. It's all going swimmingly for, uh, for us here at Notre Dame. Training results. Who got better? Who got worse? Well, nobody got worse, but... Let's go position by position. Johnny Manziel has jumped Mariota again. He now gets one more speed. Did his throw power get better at all? Because that's really what was the problem with Johnny Manziel last season. So his throw power did get better. His accuracy got better. Okay, so his throw power and throw accuracy got better. That's good. But Mariota also looks good. There's going to be a competition. There's going to be a competition. Maybe we play first half with Manziel, second half with Mariota. Who knows? I don't, I don't know yet. Running back Todd Gurley becomes a 99 overall. Wasn't he already in? I don't know if he was or not. But he's a 99 overall. We've got Derrick Henry, plus 5, plus 7 to Alvin Kamara. Derrick Henry's got 90 speed now, 94 speed for Todd Gurley. Fullback Derrick Watt becomes a 90 overall. And Ronnie Garcia, or Rodney Garcia, becomes a 63, so that's cool. Wide receiver Amari Cooper's up to a 99. Mike Evans, 97. Mike Thomas, a 90. Mark Andrews gets plus 4. He's a 78 now. So that, that might have been a good idea to move him to to wide receiver he's gonna be a good one especially at 6'6 tight end oj howard becomes an 89 and dalton schultz becomes an 81 offensive line ronnie stanley an 84 mcglinchey an 83 so ronnie stanley officially is better than mike mcglinchey now because they were tied for a while isaiah Wynn becomes an 82 and quentin nelson becomes an 81 very very interesting so do we start isaiah Wynn now or do we keep quentin Nel i don't know I'll have to make that decision. 297s at center. We are going to hurt at center. We're going to have freshmen next year at center. That's going to be weird. Austin Blythe is a 98. We've got 94 Taylor Decker and 90, or 87 Cam Robinson. Joey Bosa up to an 89 as a sophomore redshirt. Sheldon Day, 93. Kim DJ, 93. Oh, I'm sorry. Kim DJ, 93. Miles Garrett, 85. Leonard Williams... 98, DeForest Buckner 89, and Malik McDowell 86, Miles Jack up to an 84, Jalen Smith up to a 98, he is a stud, absolute stud as a sophomore, Reggie Raglan is a senior at 94 overall, Ben Bulware 90, Rashawn Evans 86, Josh Perry 90, 85 for Leonard Floyd, at corner Trey Waynes is a 94, Kavari Russell and Marcus Peters are 93s, 91 for Jalen Ramsey, 87 for Eli Apple, 86 for Jaravius White, 85 for Adoree Jackson, and 83 for Marshawn Lattimore. Kevin Byard gets a 91. And if I can move on, there we go. 92 for Lyle. Uh, I keep doing that. Landon Collins. It's because I saw Lyle Collins go in the draft. That's why I'm thinking about him. Jamal Adams up to an 83 and Keanu Neal up to an 83 as well. God, I'm so worried about Jamal Adams. I'm so worried he's going to leave us. Will Lutz up to an 84. And we didn't have a punter because he left. 
So that's all the training results. Good stats. Good stats for everybody. I'm, I'm liking it. We now officially have four 99s, and two of them are quarterbacks. <laughs> so that's interesting to say the least. But we've got to cut players. The worst part about the job. Who's not making the team? Maybe I don't have to cut anybody, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to cut some people. Maybe at least two or three. I don't know. Let's find out. I will have to cut how many players? I will have to cut two players from the team. I kind of know who I'm going to go with already. So I will cut. Who do we cut? Who do we cut? Probably Tanner Mooney. He's just not going to be good enough. So Tanner, goodbye. It's weird because he was the number three free safety in the country and he gets cut for a guy that was an athlete who was not even technically supposed to be in uh, a free safety. Corner, do we cut Cooper? He's an option. We could cut Cooper. We have a lot of corners. It's really up to either Cooper or one of these linebackers, I guess, because we have a lot of linebackers. I think we keep Cooper. I think we keep Cooper and we cut a linebacker. And it's probably going to be Ryan Austin. Because I don't think... I'm going to keep this David Bell or this Donald Bell guy. He's not going to be Donald Bell after this episode. But I kind of like the story that we didn't offer him a scholarship. He's still committed. So whoever I end up making him, then we can kind of... Like that can be the story for that guy. So it's got to be one of these two linebackers. And it's probably going to be, who don't, who, who don't I like more? You're a bust, so let's just get the bust out of here. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter because their, their ratings are going to be different no matter what. So just get the bust out of here. So that's all the guys that we need to cut. That's good. We didn't need to cut that many players. Advance to the next stage. Custom conferences. Should we get out of the Big Ten? We Actually, no. We've only been here for one season. We should keep in the Big Ten for at least another year. Maybe after next season, we'll move to the ACC. But I, th I think the the conferences are all fixed. I guess I could move Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC since that's what they're going to be doing in real life in a few years. So I could do that. That could be pretty interesting. Hmm. I don't know. I have to think about it. I will have to think about it. This is the one chance you get to do the custom conferences. I now have the ability to reset my coaching tree. I get it. Yeah, I'm not going to do that, though. I'm fine with my coaching tree the way it is. If you don't mind. All right, custom conferences. The Big Ten has me in it. <laughs> Notre Dame. Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Rutgers, Penn State, Indiana, Maryland. Okay, this, this uh, Big Ten is pretty good just with me in it now, with Notre Dame in it. The Big 12 still has Texas Uncle. Do we want to move Texas Oklahoma to the SEC? That could be pretty interesting. That could be pretty interesting. The ACC looks good. I think it'd be pretty fun to see what happens. I don't know. I think we'll leave it for another year. We'll leave it for another year. We'll have a huge realignment next year because we'll move out of the Big 10 and we'll go to the ACC where Notre Dame, if they were ever to not be independent anymore, that's where they would be. They'd go to the ACC. So after next year, we will go there. So we'll have huge conference realignment next year. I think we'll keep everything this how it is for this year. But next offseason will be huge. Absolutely huge conference realignment. You're just going to have to remind me <laughs> so I don't forget. Advance to the next stage is the preseason, so we are entering the end of the episode. I hope you guys did enjoy. We had some pretty big stuff go down in this episode. Keeping Jamal uh, Adams from transferring was a, probably the biggest thing that went down in this episode. Losing Melvin Gordon to the draft as a junior. But that just that's kind of a blessing in disguise because that frees up a spot for Derrick Henry, who otherwise would have just sat the bench again behind Melvin Gordon. So, who was sitting the bench behind Todd Gurley? So that it works out because now we get to see Derrick Henry in action, and I'll do all this stuff off camera, and then I'll start the season. We'll go over everything next episode. 
That's the start of season number two. We are the preseason number one, and we will enter the season probably number one as well. I hope you guys did enjoy. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Remember, the names that you saw in the recruiting will not be the same names. Next episode, we will have real life players at these different positions. So this is probably gonna be Lamar Jackson. If I had to guess, this running back will be somebody that you guys recognize. Yeah, you guys get the picture. So that's the last time you will see those guys. But I hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.